What would God have to do to get your attention, to give up the toys and rewards of earthly success and say, yes, I'm in. I'll do what you want. I'll go where you want me to go. Where have you drawn the line between your plan for your life, work, family, retirement, travel, and his plan for your few years on the planet? Today you'll meet a man who traded in so many of the world's prizes for something much, much richer. He's back from Southeastern Africa with a story that defies description. Don't miss this conversation. Here's a pop quiz. How far is Hershey, Pennsylvania from Mozambique? Don't Google it, I'll tell you. 8,168 miles, that's a lot of miles. Now, what would it take for an executive from the Hershey Company, you know, Hershey Chocolate, to decide to uproot his life, connections, and family to work in one of the world's poorest countries? Before you get the answer, let me define poor. The national poverty rate in Mozambique surged from 48.4% to 62.8% between 2015 and 2020. And in the rural communities of that beautiful African country, the number is staggeringly much higher. This is a nation defined by generations of poverty. That's where my guest, Don Larson, comes in. I don't want to get too far into his story without showing you this short video about the extraordinary organization he founded, Sunshine Nut Company. It's possible to create a premium food product and transform lives and communities at the same time. We're doing it every day with cashews here in Mozambique. I'm Don Larson, founder and CEO of the Sunshine Nut Company. And I'm Terry Larson, director of social impact. A cashew deteriorates from the moment that it's taken out of its shell. Most cashews, they sit around for three to six months unroasted, getting stale. We roast within three weeks because we're right here in Africa where they're grown. I came to Africa in 2004 as the director of cocoa operations for the Hershey Company. I was one of the largest cocoa buyers in the world and was surprised at the extreme poverty of the African farming communities. So many international companies benefit from the resources of Africa while the people of Africa remain in poverty. In 2011, we sold everything and moved to Mozambique to create the Sunshine Nut Company. The Sunshine Approach is a sustainable business model that brings lasting transformation. We buy our cashews right here among the Mozambican farming communities at fair prices. We roast and package in country, and we hire young men and women, most of whom were abandoned and orphaned in their youth, to run our factories. We sell our cashews at competitive prices in major retail stores, and then 90% of our profits go back to the poor and orphan. 30% to uplift cashew farming communities, like providing medical training and planting new cashew trees to give families an income. 30% goes to the care of orphans and vulnerable children. There are a lot of broken families in Mozambique. Our sunshine houses pair loving widows with orphan children to create new family units. The remaining 30% is invested into new sunshine companies to transform communities across the continent. Em 2012, uh, conheci o Sr. Don. Fui uma das pessoas escolhidas para fazer parte do grupo que vinha trabalhar na Sunshine. É através de Sunshine que eu comecei a ter uma vida melhor. É através da Sunshine que consigo dar o melhor às minhas filhas, à minha esposa, à minha família em geral. Estou muito orgulhoso por mim mesmo, por ser um pai, por ser um pai presente. We do the most amazing cashews, but it's much beyond that. It's like what we can do for our workers and what our workers, they were also orphans, most of them, and what they can do to impact other kids. Yeah, this is what it means to love your neighbor like you love yourself. Don, I'm almost without words when I see the images of those beautiful, smiling faces. Uh, before we go to Mozambique, can you take me back to your life before Sunshine Nut Company? Because you were 
a very successful guy, weren't you? Uh, yeah, by the world's definition yeah. of you weren't, success. You weren't, you weren't born into a poor family. Nope. No, but, I had a, a nice upbringing, nice. Uh, very good family, and went to Penn State University, met my wife there, got uh, some great jobs, and in Hershey was probably the best company to work for, I would say, in America. Um, and they treated me right. It was a very good opportunity. So, so um, you advanced through the, the, the I state. came up through the ranks very yeah. quickly because I like challenges, I like work. I uh, wasn't doing it necessarily for the promotion, things like that, at least not uh, in the beginning maybe a bit. But then I became a Christian in my mid-20s. Actually, more later 20s. What happened? What happened? Age that, of 29. What happened? That, well, my wife and I, um, we involved together in our faith. She had been raised Catholic, and I was going to church with my family, usually on holidays and things like that. Nothing really, wasn't a big part of our lives. Um, but we both prayed the prayer of salvation with, uh, at the Evangelical Free Church of Hershey. And... Um, we weren't quite sure what was different in our lives because we were following, we were going to attending mass and things like that. But God had plans and he just started to change me. Starting to give me this feeling like there's something much more that he wants me to do other than what I was currently doing. And I'd get progressively, the, the higher that I went, the more successful I got, um, the more unfulfilled I got and not satisfied. I sat in the church and church pews, listening. I'm like, God wants me to do much more. And I was doing. I was going to Promise Keepers events. I was Bible studies. I was studying to be, be an elder. But uh, you had a big income. I had a very nice income. I had every toy you could think of. I had my my Porsche, my high performance Porsche. I flew a hot air balloon for 25 years, over a thousand hot air balloon flights. Flew airplane. Had street bikes, dirt bikes. RVs, everything. Nice house, big house. Big house in suburban Philadelphia, you know, and uh, with a pool. Kids went to uh, Delaware County Christian School, nice private school. My, t my wife taught there. And life was good, except it was good by the world's standards. And I just felt the need that I wanted to, to really do what the Bible says. I had made Jesus my, my Savior, but I hadn't made him my Lord. I kind of had a... a a life insurance policy yeah. in the back, you know? Yeah. And I had let him into the back seat, but he wanted to drive the car. Yeah. And so that's when I, uh, I relinquished that. I, I think that's how surrendered. it is for most. I think the number of Christian people around the country and the world are, are like that, or, mm -hmm. you know, like they believe in Jesus, but he's not driving the car. He's not, yeah. he's not in charge of it. He's not the master, the Lord of their life. You know, they don't want to hear anything about, you know, like, I don't want you to have this, you know, you've got this comfortable life in the suburbs, yeah, you I know, did. you probably belong to a club or two, mm -hmm. you know, you, you probably took nice vacations. Yep. You had, you know, money was not a problem for you. You could have the, all the creature comforts. Right. And yet, and still you're empty. Here it is, you know, you're, you're, you're not fulfilled. You feel like God has something more for you to do. And, and all this stuff isn't, isn't getting it done for you. Yeah. So what do you do? Well, I, uh, I, I actually left Hershey. I built the largest cocoa processing factory. Through a couple years there, it was sold off to the largest chocolate maker. So I had a nice sum of cash. Yeah. I had a lot of job offers. Wow. And I decided, no, I want to take some time off. And during that time off, actually, while a large, very good company was creating a senior VP position for me to make the company excellent. It was, it was Campbell Soup close by, you know? And they said, it's gonna take five to six months. Can you take five to six months? I'm off. yes sir, I would be glad to do that. And during that time is when I surrendered to the Lord. And God started to move in profound ways um, during that time. And so they finally called me up, they called me in. And I said, no, I'm sorry, I, I'm gonna do something different. You know, I had surrendered to the Lord, very, very cer ceremoniously too. Went down overnight, down to the beach in the middle of winter, prayed all night, felt God in the room. I felt his tangible presence as I wrote out a surrender note saying, God, the first half of my life has been amazing. I have everything I want. 
I have the most beautiful wife, wonderful children. Every job has been so satisfying from a work standpoint. But I said, I know this is not what i am been put on the earth to do. And so the second half of my life, I was 44, is all yours. I'll do what you want me to do. And he took me up on that. And the first test was turning down uh, Campbell's Soup. And they called me in. And I'm in with the executives. They couldn't believe that I turned down this position that they created. And it was such an easy job for me because it was just repeating what I did at, at Hershey. And uh, I, they said, at the end of the lunch, they said, how much money is it going to take Don Larson to join Campbell Soup Company? And I said, it's not about the money. I want to help people. And I remember walking down the marble hallway out the building thinking, Boy, I hope I'm right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and a lot of people right. saying, you were wrong. Yeah, right. God created that. You could have had so have much all wealth. That, all and that money. And... But I sense God saying, no, this is not what I have for you. And I know now it's not what he had for me. But I, I withstood the test. And there are many tests like that that God puts before you. Or will you choose the world or will you choose me? Mm. And that's very hard to discern. After that, I joined seminary. I got involved with all these things. And I, I took two to three years off. I was going out in the woods, being with the Lord. I was talking with the birds and the animals. <laughs> you know, I was really worrying my family, my friends, my colleagues, and everything. But I was having the time of my life. And I think the monks have it. I think they really do. Yeah. spending time with the Lord in silence, developing a relationship. I got to the point where I was so in love with God that when he delivered my calling, I didn't even think twice. I sold off everything. I donated. I was giving away stuff. We hadn't sold our house. The, the plane trip to Mozambique was there. I said, I'm getting on the plane. You guys can sell the house. I made some really dumb financial moves, but I didn't care. I wanted to to do what God was asking me to do. And so we moved to a foreign country. I knew no one. It was pro it's probably one of the toughest countries in the world. So what's the annual income for people in Mozambique? Yeah, so, you talked about the poverty rate, but not yeah, how much they make. So you got it good there. I mean, the, the poverty rate has even gone up further. So they just had a statistic that it's gotten worse. But what we're doing is uh, the Mozambique 80% of the population is in agriculture. Right. And yet the government says, but 99.9% .9 of them are subsistence farming. So they're not in agriculture. You got 80% of the population that will starve if they don't grow some food around the, right. on the field. And so what we're doing is turning those subsistence farmers making $31 a year that's their income. $31 a year. Yeah. So BBC did a study. It was $31. UNICEF did another study. It was $33. Hey, anywhere under $50 a year is pretty poor. That's really poor. And so they live in stick-walled huts, grass roofs, dirt floors. Yet, they're smart people. I interact with them all. We're helping hundreds of families now. And we're helping them transition to be cash crop farmers. So they're going to go from $30 per year. There are a couple years into it where we give them two hectares of their own land. We allocate it, do everything for them, put in wells, and they'll go from $33 to $5,000 per year. Wow. Which is 144 times, times the income. Right. And it's based on income from our Sunshine Nut brand bringing export cash into the country. $5,000 is actually a lot of money because it's my son twice the living took, wage. Took, took a course in college I remember he called me up one day, he was, just, he was just incredulous. He said, Dad, this can't be true. He says, I'm reading this book and it's saying that if you make more than $5,000, if you make $5,000 a year, you're in the top 15% um, of wage earners in the world. Yeah. He said that you know, nearly 90, 85 to 90% of the world makes less than that. Mm -hmm. And he said, that can't be true. And I said, no, but it is. And here it is. Yeah. And you know, we're looking forward to seeing we'll have subsidized, we're not only they'll be making that, but we'll be bringing in subsidies from the sales of our cashew nuts, doing work with the poor, the widowed, and the orphan. I mean, we have orphan homes all around the perimeter where we match up um, either widowed or vulnerable women with four to six orphans. 10% of the population of Mozambique is orphaned. Wow. So 
we have 30 some kids right now. I hope we'll have hundreds of kids, yeah. if not thousands. Yeah. They yeah. speak uh, Portuguese? Portuguese, yeah. Did you, you know, did you learn the language? I or? butcher it all the time. Yeah, yeah. But my wife and my son are, are very proficient. You're, so you're, is your whole family over there with you? No, we had to leave two behind. One was uh, going into Gordon College mm -hmm. at the time, my daughter. She stayed here. And then my son was a senior in high school. And he elected to stay with a family that we know. And so he joined us after for a, a gap year, which was a really good year for him. But my 13-year-old son, he had no choice. Okay. So he came with. Okay. Now he, uh, he's back running the factory for us. He, I mean, he's doing some great things. My daughter handles all the uh, sales and marketing and all the distribution and the brokers and the retailers here in Pennsylvania, right outside of. Uh, I, I see how you, you're, this huge percentage of, I guess, your profits are going right back yeah. to the people. So you're, you're helping the orphans, right. you're helping the local community, you're, 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 you're what could otherwise go into your pocket right. to make you an even richer guy than you were right. is actually going back to help people who are. Well, we, all, we dumped everything we own. We had to. And we're down to living off God's uh, promises. And uh, you know, I, that would have shocked me back then. Now I know what God wants wants me to be you know and so we move uh, through life relying on the Lord and he's always faithful yeah yeah well this he's always is, trying to teach you something though. well yeah, these lessons are hard to they're learn they're tough life. they're yeah. hard to learn in life but but the, the the just shall live by faith and we, we walk by faith not by sight yeah. and and God has taught you that um, after after all the benefits of worldly wealth um, uh, which is something quite amazing to have and to behold. You know, God has brought you into what is true riches, yeah. the true riches of his kingdom and, and the fulfillment that comes with, with, with following him, with listening to him. You know, Jesus says, you know, my children hear my voice mm -hmm. and they follow me. You know, yeah. I, I oftentimes ask people that in my sermons, you know, do you hear God's voice? Are you listening to him? Yeah. Are you following? Would, would you go where he asked you to go? Would you do what he asked you to do, even if it was hard? You know, if it was out of your comfort zone, because for most of us, being a Christian is very comfortable. It fits very nicely. You know what? We, we have our, our salary, you know, our bonus, our, our home, you know, uh, our, our vacations, our, our car, our nice little life. We go out to eat in these fancy restaurants. Mm -hmm. and, and then on Sunday, we worship Jesus. And maybe we go to Bible study on a Wednesday night or whatever. And we feel like we're really knocking the ball out of the park as a Christian, you know, mm -hmm. because we're doing nothing except worshiping. But we haven't we haven't helped anybody. I mean, you know, here it is, you, all these opportunities, like in the, the, the parable of the Good Samaritan, you know, yeah. Jesus, here's a guy that needs help. And the two religious people walk right past him. Mm -hmm. And it's the guy who, from the despised culture who nobody would think highly of yep. that, that loves him and that helps him. Yeah, you know. you know, the selfish versus the selfless. Most people do things that they want to do and are you doing it for the Lord or are you doing it for yourself? Is it a selfish thing? Or are you doing what you really don't want to do? I didn't want to move to Africa. I didn't want to go back in the food industry. But if you're asking me, Lord, I'll do it. I didn't, we didn't know anyone. We gave up everything. We separated our family, moved away from our immediate family and friends and all. And uh, there is a sacrifice to that. But I've never been more fulfilled. I, I did the, uh, an epitaph when I surrendered. And part of, on there was, let me be the, the soil that multiplies by 100. And also, I want to have no regrets. And right now, I'm living my life. For years, I sat and I had regrets. I didn't want to approach the end of my life saying, I didn't do what the Lord wanted me to do. So now, I know I'm within the will of God. And there's no better place to be. I, I believe that, and I agree with that wholeheartedly, brother. Um, when we come back, I want to ask Don about how God is stretching him today. He's already experienced so much change in the, in the last decade of his life, but what about now? What is God doing in his life and, and the special company he leads? Stay with us. You're watching Joe Watkins' State of Independence on Lighthouse TV, positively different. Share your comments about today's program in the comment box at joewatkins.org.
Well, if you visit sunshinenuts.com, you'll see a pretty audacious claim, one that's backed up by facts. We make the world's best to make the world better. What a claim, but it's true. Hundreds now, thousands of people have seen their lives transformed by a company that began when, when one man and his wife said yes to God's plan for his life. My special guest is Sunshine Nut CEO, Don Larson. Uh, there are a lot of people that are watching Don that you know, are wondering like, well, maybe I'm too old, I, I can't do what Don did. What, you know what strikes me about your life is I, I was just preaching on Sunday um, about uh, the parable that Jesus talked about, the sower and the seeds. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the seed that fell on good ground, that, that seed ended up producing uh, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. And, and, and that's who you are. You're, 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 you're the good ground that, that, that God's Word fell on, and you absorbed it, and it's grown into something beautiful and much larger than yourself yeah. and all these people. What do you say to other people? I know there are so few people. You know, the, the other verse says that, you know, the... The, the seed fell on, 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 on land and, and, and weeds choked it. And the yeah. weeds are the cares of this world. Everything you just talked about, you know, like yep. the cares of this life, riches, you know, glory, uh, comfort. They, they, choke this, they choke the seed and, and, and yeah. as a result, it doesn't grow. But they call that the abundant life, yeah. according to the Bible. And that's not the abundant life. The abundant life is living out God's will for your life. I truly believe that. I get to see the brilliance of God continuously. You know, I, I'm doing the, the food company, I'm doing the, the cashew nuts, we're selling in Whole Foods, it'll be 10 years in Whole Foods. You know, I'm on QVC on a regular basis. I mean, wonderful openings. And now we're going worldwide. But I was called up into the Islamic insurgency that's happening in the north. 5,000 people over the last five years have been killed, uh, four to 5,000, over a million displaced in these Muslim, hardened Muslim communities, you know, where the insurgency is going through because of a large, well, there's a whole bunch of reasons, but there's some large gas installations that are being built, Total Energies and ExxonMobil and all. And they came to me, the government and those companies came to me and said, we need your community farm and village factory model in these areas to bring prosperity. And so I went up there, they, gave our foundation money to do this. We've been working with hundreds of families, 400 families, in changing that. And, you know, we're, we're Christian. They're all Muslim. But they know, why do we do it? Because of the love of God. And our faith wants everyone to feel God's love. And so we're there and changing not only the communities, but the government, where, you know, total energies, opened up a foundation where they're funding, instead of unsustainable type projects, they're doing stuff like ours in concert with us, but they're funding at $200 million a year. Wow. And now we're being approached by other companies to do the same thing because they can't offer employment because it's highly specialized petrochemical jobs, engineering jobs and all. But we can bring significant prosperity where long before they showed up, it was generations of nothing. And now we're bringing them into prosperity. And prosperity brings peace. And now we've got the Nobel Peace Prize Forum, which I've spoken at a few years back. Probably going to speak again there. We won the first annual United Nations Business for Peace Award. You know, in, in just so many different places that the Lord's opening up for me to express my faith. And you know what they say? It's a lot of, a lot of uh, secular. They say, thank you for walking the talk. Thank you for not just talking, but thank you for demonstrating the faith. They know the faith. They're looking for people and examples. So if people actually listen to the Lord, he's got the most brilliant and amazing plan. It might mean give everything up to go to Africa. It might be involved something locally, but there's so many places where love is needed. And it's so simple to do. Mm. So that's what I would encourage people to do. Start right. with love and start locally. Maybe he'll send you. Beautifully said. Well, Don, this was such a special conversation about how God can use anybody, even a guy who is a big deal in corporate America like you, to get his work done on earth. You've been a huge encouragement to a lot of people today, including me. 
So thank you for being on State of Independence. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, brother. Yeah. We'll be right back with our great producer, Jeff Coleman, and closing thoughts. Learn more about Joe Watkins and the mission of this program at joewatkins.net. And tell Joe what you thought about today's program in the comment box. And now let's talk to our great producer, Jeff Coleman. So what Don gave today was, is he, he several times throughout his conversation here used the word surrender. And uh, it's a very different understanding from the cultural notion of being Christian or a Christian. Um, that the step of belief is one thing, but then surrendering your life to whatever God's purpose is. We are still in a culture that says, what do you want to be when you grow up? Instead of asking, what does God want you to do? Where will he send you? Our, even our good, healthy Christian school culture is built on career paths that are basically about job placement, employment, and then retirement vacations. How do you accommodate all that? So Don gives us this model of, hey, do you want to you get all the toys? He can tell you how to do that. You want to live a joyful, fulfilled, happy life? Surrender. And that is not intuitive, I think, in America um, when you're contrasting our average income, our lifestyle, with a $30 to $50 annual income. You know, living in the Philippines growing up, um, I, I heard numbers like that for people, and it's hard to understand. But there aren't many distractions either to spend the extra money on. So uh, what I hope our viewers were able to take away with today is at least something practical that if you're 8 or 80 or somewhere in between, that it is, there's never a wrong time, midlife, to say, yes, I'm in. What do you want me to do? And it could be as simple as, well, talk to your neighbor. You know, stop, turn news off for a little bit and talk to your neighbor. Uh, stop fretting so much about the outcome of the election and volunteer at your church or the mission next door. So, great show. Yeah, today. yeah. What a, what a powerful word, you know, to surrender. I love that. Yeah. Powerful word. Powerful word today. Well, there's an oft-quoted uh, verse in the book of Proverbs in the Bible that challenges us to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. If we do, the writer promises, He will direct our paths. Maybe you've been off the path for some time. Maybe you can't see your hand in front of your face because life feels so upside down. The message of Don's life and the promise to every believer is that trusting God is the only safe path in this life. None of the other stuff matters. If this conversation with Don blessed you today, I'd love to hear from you. Send me a comment in the comment box at joewatkins.org. For Jeff Coleman and the entire team here at Lighthouse TV, thanks for being with us tonight. From America's first capital, Philadelphia, I'm Joe Watkins. Thanks so much for watching. God willing, I'll see you again next week. Powerful word, to give everything up, you know, all the stuff in the world, you know, like all Literally, the creature not enough time to sell it. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, I think, where we should be. At least the willingness to say, I don't need this. But we're so locked into our 30-year plans and our 10-year